right, we are recording. What is up everyone? Welcome to Ian Credible. I'm your host, Ian. And today we are talking about my absolute ultimate list of essentials for a road trip. You ask, why are you qualified to create a list? I'm more qualified than most. I've been all across the country, corner to corner, thousands and tens and tens of thousands of miles uh, under my belt, just on road trips alone, probably somewhere between 500 and 750,000 miles of driving in my life. I've been on the road a lot and I'm gonna help you cover the one thing you may or may not have on your list today. So without further ado, let's get into the list. Number one, maybe I shouldn't number these. We'll see, I don't know. Number one on my list and should be on anybody's is an obvious one. That is a medic kit, first aid kit. Uh, mine's by a company called My Medic. It's got a cool strap on the back here. You can actually undo this, strap it to the back of the headrest. So it's kind of up and, and handy. And then it's got a little like, uh, what is that, Velcro release. So you can undo that, undo this. And if it's hanging, it just kind of folds out. Uh, on the back of your headrest. I actually don't keep mine there anymore just because I didn't like that it was like putting a pretty significant like uh, indentation on the back of my headrest. Um, so yeah, that's what I use. It comes with uh, some standard stuff, but it's gonna have everything that you want. Bandages, some type of like antibacterial cream, so like Neosporin, um, but put what you, uh, you want, what you need in there. Some gauze, some shears are always good. Medications like Advil, um, Tylenol, aspirin, Motrin, those are great. Um, yeah, so my medic makes this one. Uh, nonetheless, you gotta have some kind of kit just in case something happens while you're out on the road. Um, yeah, it's good stuff to have. All right, number two is an obvious one. Some kind of pocket knife. So this guy right here, this is a Spider Co. This is a Paramilitary 3. Uh, I have the Paramilitary 2, which I like. It's a little bit bigger. Um, the knife is about the same size. The handle's a little shorter. So I like this. I got a number of pocket knives. Uh, really, just having a knife is a good uh, tool to have. You never know if you might need to cut a seatbelt out in an emergency situation. Um, you just, you don't know. It, it's why, it's like one of those like things that's like, we're, we're gonna be the Boy Scouts today. Always be prepared. So pocket knife, number two for me. Number three, or my Euro friends, number three. Uh, we got the, the little European number three, uh, is a flashlight. This one, uh, I love this flashlight. All right, I'm, I'll be dorky about some things on this list. This is one of them. So this is the Streamlight Wedge. Hold it up there for the camera. <clears throat> the Streamlight Wedge. I think they have a Wedge 2 or a Micro or both, I don't know uh, for sure. But it's got, what I love about this is it's a flat design, it's not perfectly round. So when you set it on a surface, it's not gonna roll away. It's the same reason why like contractor, uh, like Sharpies are in this like oval shape. So if you set it down, you're not losing your pen rolling off. You don't want your flashlight doing that. It's rechargeable on the end cap, USB-C, which is awesome in my book. Micro is like a thing of the past. Uh, and then it's a, like a three position little switch. So you got off on the bottom, click it up, it's on. And then if you push it forward, you get like a momentary brightness. And it's just like a little, see that little switch right there? So you just kind of push that up and you get your momentary. It's great. Great battery life, recharges fast. Um, can't say enough good things about this. I probably have already said the adequate amount. So we're gonna move on. But the Streamlight Wedge, really good flashlight. Any flashlight will do. But I would invest in a good one. Uh, handheld is is great flashlight. I'm gonna give you a bonus one here. Unnumbered is a headlamp. So I'm a big uh, Petzl guy. I've had headlamps since I was, I don't know, growing up in the Northwest. I was probably like 15, 16 when I got my first headlamp. And they are awesome. This one's extra cool because it fi they finally came out with like a rechargeable battery pack. So this Petzl Core, uh, you can see there. Rechargeable battery pack, you plug it in uh, via USB micro, we just talked about, and it, it's got great battery life. It's got a couple different brightness settings, you know, one, two, three, 
You got some strobe functions. You got red light functions. It's, there we go, a little red strobe. It's a great, great headlamp. Um, this one's the Actic Core. I would just say the nice thing about a headlamp is being able to either put this around your neck or having it on your head. They got the adjustable function here. If you're by yourself or you don't have someone to hold a flashlight or you're working on something where you can't get a flashlight to stick, a headlamp is clutch. All right, number four, jumper cables. Jumper cables, jumper cables. I think these are the first jumper cables I ever had. I don't even know the brand. It doesn't even say the brand. They're just cables. They're jumper cables. Yeah. Um, one thing, so you can get any kind of jumper cable, it's fine. One thing to think about though is the copper wire on the inside of this, that's what's conducting the electricity from battery one to battery two through the clamps. That copper wire gets basically smashed down on the underneath these like little colored, uh, I don't know, plastic covers. Make sure those things are really crimped down. Over time, they kind of loosen up and you won't have a good connection. So throw them in a vise, pair of vise grips. Crimp, make sure they're really crimped down good. Um, you can't go wrong with these. You don't want to be left out. Another bonus one, another bonus one is a jump box. Jump box is awesome because you don't need another car to jump your battery. You show up in a parking lot, you go to fire it up, click, 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 no dice hook this bad boy up, you're off and running, good to go. Why this is nice is because, again, I mean, you just, you don't need someone there. This by itself, not the best idea. Because if this battery's dead, then you're, you're kind of up the creek versus if you have the jumper cables, you could still get somebody else to help you out. I will say this does come with a way to recharge the battery via micro USB. You could do that through like an AC unit, uh, like an AC like plug adapter, or it has a 12 volt, a 12 volt uh, plug that goes in like a cigarette lighter. So you could charge this up while you're rolling down the road. Kind of cool. Um, this one actually, this one's got some cool features. So it actually has a flashlight feature. So you turn it on, you hit the flashlight and it's pretty bright. It's got a couple different settings and it's got a strobe. So if you need to use this as like an emergency marker, you definitely could, okay, we're getting real blinky and it's off. Um, you could use it as like an emergency signal type thing, which is pretty cool. I imagine that will last a very long time. This one's serious. This is the GB150. I got this like, this big dog one just because I drive an F-250, it's a diesel truck, it's got two batteries, needs a lot of juice to get that thing going. And I figured if I'm gonna buy something, I'm gonna buy something that's gonna jump my vehicle. So um, there's other brands out there. These guys are kind of the go-to, um, but there's some other good brands. Jump box as a nice little bonus. All right, we are at number five on our list. This, a dedicated GPS is so clutch. So clutch. Um, it's a total luxury. Everybody's got smartphones. Smartphones do navigation. You got Google Maps, you got Waze, you got Apple Maps. I'm sure MapQuest, anyone, it's not around anymore. But here's why a dedicated GPS is so clutch. When you're on a road trip and you're relying on navigation, let's just say like, so my brother Evan and I, we've done a lot of road trips and we were going from like Nashville to like Amarillo in like one shot, which is, I wanna say that's like an eight to 900 mile stint. And when you're doing that amount of driving in one day, you don't wanna have somebody's phone hijacked. The reality is you run out of games and conversation and podcasts and music. Like sometimes you just wanna like do your own thing on your phone, maybe like just kinda of like take a moment. Um, or you might need to call your wife or do something for work or respond to an email. You don't wanna to have to be taking the screen down or swapping that out, it's just not cool. Dedicated GPS makes your life so easy. This is the Garmin RV, I think it's the 790 or the 890. Will it tell me somewhere? All right, yeah, that's right. So this is the Garmin RV 890. The RV thing is cool because it gives you the ability to add trailer information. So I had a 25 foot boat that I was towing around. Um, you can put in the height, the width, the length. Uh, if it's an RV, any propane tanks, things like that. And it will route you 
in a fashion that's not gonna put you in harm's way. So for instance, some bridges and tunnels uh, or even ferries or, or that kind of stuff have restrictions on length, on weight, on propane tanks. You plug all that stuff in, you're good to go. I figured I'm not always driving like that, but if I ever need to be, buy it once, cry once, I'm good to go. It's awesome. I freaking love it. I love it so much. My brother, Evan, mentioned earlier, who does a lot of driving himself, recently got one and he loves it as well. It's got a cool feature. I'm not gonna get into this, but like, look, it says car up here in this corner. You just hit that. You switch over to your trailer setup. It shows you all that information. There we go. Shows you all that information about it. You plug that stuff in and away you go. Um, dedicated GPS for the win. All right, number six, a cooler. Coolers are great. They keep things cold. When you're on the road, you might have things you want to keep cold, like drinks, water, that kind of stuff. Um, when you get to your destination, it might be nice to have a nice cold beverage. So um, this is my go-to. It's great because it fits snugly in a car. This is a Yeti, uh, what is this? The Hopper Flip 12. Flip lid, nice and spacious on the inside. A cooler is, a, is so nice. Actually, let me show you one other thing. If you're into things that work, these Yeti ice blocks, they have a couple of different sizes. This is a four pound, they have a two pound, they have a one pound. The four pounds fit perfectly right on the bottom. And then you can stack up 12 drinks right here, put another one on top, zip it up, and you have like a cooler with a drink sandwich and ice packs on the inside. It's awesome. Number seven, we got gloves. Pretty self-explanatory. They go on your hands. They protect your hands from what's on the other side of the glove. Um, you're changing a tire. You got a monkey with something on a trailer. I drive a diesel truck, diesel pumps. Diesel's just dirty and diesel pumps get pretty dirty. Throw these on your hands if you get to a pump that's just disgusting. You're not covered in diesel smell. Gloves are great. Uh, they do keep your hands slightly warmer too. Um, depending on the gloves you get, these are mechanics. They make a million of them. Gloves. Super obvious one to me because I have sensitive eyes. Sunglasses. Sunglasses are critical. You're driving west. What happens when it gets uh, late in the day? The sun's right in your eyes. You fold down said visor. You can't fold it all the way down and you're gonna need sunglasses. Now, um, what I'll say about sunglasses is polarized glasses are great because they cut down on the glare. These are Madsons. I really dig these. I got a wide head uh, in case you didn't recognize that already and they just fit good. So I, I dig them, they're like black, they got a tortoise kind of fade to the bottom. They're cool, sunglasses. Definitely critical, probably pretty obvious though, number eight on my list. All right, number nine on the list, eye drops. These are Theratiers. Not all eye drops are created equal. So here's what I'll say about eye drops. These are essentially like artificial tears. All you want is something to lubricate your eyes. When you're driving a long time, Sometimes you forget to blink. You might have the AC blowing. You might have the heater blowing. Dries your eyes out. Eye drops are critical for a long road trip. You do not want to use like, what's the red eye one? Visine. You don't want to use like Visine or something like that that's designed to take the red out of your eyes. I had an eye doctor once explain it to me and it makes total sense. I'd never heard it. So I'm just going to share it with you. I'm not a doctor, but this is what I heard. Visine and like the, like the ones that take the red out of your eyes, when you put the drop in your eyes, what it's doing is it's getting the blood vessels in your eyes to constrict, um, which means the blood's not flowing through those vessels, which means your eyes are gonna look whiter, less red. When that drug wears off, they go back. Well, what happens when you keep constricting and, and expanding those blood vessels is eventually over time, those blood vessels are just gonna stay like expanded. And so if you use them a lot, it's not good for your eyes um, from like a redness perspective. So we don't care about the redness here. We do care about 
uh, our eyelids sticking together and our eyes burning, feeling like they have glass in them because they're so dang tired. Uh, artificial tears, I use Thera Tears, it's great. There's a bunch of brands. That is number nine. Number 10 is an easy one. I have no visual here, it's snacks. And look, let's be real. Stopping at gas stations, they're not all created equal. Some gas stations have all the snacks, super clean, super nice. Some of them are pretty shady and the snacks sitting on the shelves might be super old. So I enjoy a good gas station snack as much as the other guy, but here's what I'm gonna say about this. Bring your own snacks, try to pack some snacks with you. So that way you're not having to spend all that up in some, you know, AM, PM or 7-Eleven or Arco or Bucky's. Now we have them here in Tennessee. Um, I'm trying to think of now, like how many more? We got Shell, we got Texaco. I'm not gonna do it. But anyway, just pack some of your own snacks as like kind of like foundational snackage. And then you can kind of pick and choose here uh, from some gas stations along the way or places you go. Um, it's good, good tip, good tip. Number 11. This one, this one's very important. Uh, basic toolkit. Here, if I could pick four tools just to have in your, your vehicle for a road trip. Number one is an adjustable wrench. A crescent wrench is super, super important uh, for that. Number two and three here are screwdrivers. Have a flathead and a Phillips head. If you could have like a big and small or a big and standard of either of these, that'd be great. Um, especially this, uh, the flathead. And then just a good pair of like vice grips or like channel locks. These are channel locks uh, made by vice grip, but which is made by er Irwin. So yeah, so I would say some kind of channel lock, adjustable wrench, um, a crescent, and then some screwdrivers that will get you out of a lot of pickles. Bonus, bonus is having some type of bag here, having some kind of like rigging stuff. So like bungee cords uh, are super important. And then like some ratchet straps, I got some cheap ones. I got some better ones down here, but I'm just, you just wanna be prepared for like what you don't know about. Basic toolkit, cash, cash and some coins. Uh, depending on where you live and where you're driving, you might have tolls, you might have parking. So having some cash on hand and some quarters and coins and nickels um, just in like the center console, super handy. Um, I will say as far as toll roads go, pretty much out east. Um, anywhere up and down the east coast, toll roads. The farther out west you go, the less you run into that. But cash is important to have uh, on hand, just a little bit when you travel. This one is super important. And you're gonna laugh, but it's important. That's right dude wipes. Um, no, I'm not sponsored by them. You're going to want some kind of flushable wipe. And here's, here's what I'm going to say. I've been around the country. Remember what I said, not all gas stations are created equal. You do not want to be second guessing that authentic Mexican meal that you had two hours ago for lunch and you're either stuck out on the side of the road or even worse, you're in some horrible gas station sitting there staring at the roll of toilet paper. Like, am I really about to ply this tissue paper together myself just so I can use the bathroom? Don't wanna be there. You don't wanna be there. So just, you know, treat yourself, right? Treat yourself, treat your butt, dude wipes. Laugh all you want, but I promise you who won't be laughing, you when they come in handy when you really needed them. Some hand sanitizer. I just have this, I know, what is it, 2020? What? Uh, it's nice. I mean, remember I mentioned dirty pumps, dirty door handles, you're in the car, you're not out there trying to get sick while you got like a two day drive back home. So just wash your hands, wash your hands, throw on some sanitizer it's great for on the road. Something small like that's good. Um, I got a couple other ones here. I don't feel like I touched on. Oh, here, here we go. This is, this is nice. So I said basic toolkit. If you don't have a basic toolkit, 
that's fine. I really would not do that. But I have one of these in my truck. This is a Leatherman, all right? So we got a Leatherman. Uh, it's a multi-tool, right? So flips out, it's got a pair of pliers on it. It's got a knife. Um, it's got other things. Uh, it's got like little uh, screwdriver bits, it has a fire starter. I mean, hey, I wanna be prepared, right? Uh, you can use the back of this end as like a hammer. So if you needed to like hammer a tent stake in or like, you just don't know. Um, a multi-tool is a, is a nice little added bonus. Uh, number 16 is some type of just like little battery bank for your phone to recharge. This one's wireless, so I can just pop it on the back of my phone. Here we go. He just attaches like this. There we go. And away you go. I'm charging. It gets like one charge out of it. But if you're in a pickle, it's great. You could also hook it up via cable if you want. Some kind of little battery bank. I like the small one just because I don't use it that often. So it's like when I do need it, I'll just throw it on the back. That's pretty cool. The other, other little thing, these. You know what these are. These are microfiber sunglass bags. Um, when you're wearing those sunglasses, I probably should have brought this up with the sunglasses. But you can't have enough of these because... Sometimes the shirt you're wearing, it just doesn't clean the glasses right. So having a couple of these around the car is great. Also a little hack, sometimes you get cups and cup holders that rattle like little drives me crazy. I'm one of those people who hates the sounds in cars. If you throw one of these in the bottom or like wedge it on the side of your cup in the cup holder, takes that sound away. So you're welcome for that. Uh, last item on my list. So some of these things are small. We talked about like pocket knife. We got, we got a little battery bank. We got, uh, the dude wipes, right? We got the eye drops. We got some hand sanitizer. This I've been using for like the last year and a half. It's what I like to affectionately call the Manny pack. Um, it's like a little crossbody bag satchel. Uh, if, if you're keeping up, but whatever. Uh, this is a company called, I think they're called Air, A-E-R. It's gotta be somewhere in here. Yeah, there we go. A-E-R, and this is the X-Pac. Or is it X-Pac? I don't know, X-Pac? If you know, you know. Um, anyway, inside's orange, like bright orange, so it's easy to see stuff in here. It's got some pockets. Throw the dude wipes in here. That way, as you're marching across that horribly disgusting uh, gas station, you don't have to be carrying the dude wipes under your, under your arm like it's the Sunday paper. It's a great little bag, throw it over your shoulder. Um, you know, it's nice just kind of keep up with some of your stuff. And that wraps up my list of absolute go-to road trip essentials. Hopefully you found some value in a couple of these things. If you're new to road trips, maybe you found value in every single one. If you did find any value, hit the like button. If you found more than a little value, give me a sub. I really appreciate it. We'll catch you on the next one. This is incredible. I am Ian. Be incredible yourself. I am out. If you found any value in the... You gotta have things for being out on a road trip. If you had... If you had... All right, folks, that brings us to the end. Ian's incredible... It's too hard to say. Road trip essentials. R r r r r road trip essentials. Take it. Take it.